Star Drive 117.8 You soaring up with sky, now's the time, don't delay I'm sitting in my ride and it's time to fly So let's realign, just listen and fill your mind Hey guys, how is it going? And welcome to the Morning Star Drive on 117.8 It is Friday, June 16th And so happy for you joining us And we are ready to start another day together with the Lord So subscribe to us on YouTube Follow us on SoundCloud And make sure to support us on Patreon so today we have an exciting podcast for you. We have Until the End with Daniel Baker, the Wednesday Message Word Study, and of course, commentaries, updates, and news on what is happening around the world in this history today. All right, everyone, how are you doing? Yes, it is Friday. Uh, I'm so I'm so happy that the weekend's already here. If you haven't yet, go ahead, leave a like and comment to build our community Really happy for everyone joining us every weekday on the Morning Star Drive. Let's get up and support each other each and every day. All right, so, you know, I am loving it already. It's Friday, another beautiful day in Vancouver, Canada, and probably the most beautiful city in the entire world from my perspective. But, you know, it might be different for you, but it's amazing over here. But I'm sure everyone is having a beautiful day. Because it's Friday. The weekend is right here. So uh, for me, after I finish today's podcast, I am off for the weekend. I get uh, Fridays and Saturdays off. So hope you guys have... Uh, what's this weekend? Oh, this weekend's Father's Day. Well, at least in the Western countries, it's Father's Day. Uh, I know in Korea, there is no Father or Mother's Day. There's Parents' Day, which I think is very, very unfair because the mothers and fathers play a different role. And uh, oh, but in Korea they also have a Children's Day, which is which is very different. But you guys, uh, where like do you guys have Father's Day in or is there something like that in Asia or does every country? No, I know Asia might be different, but I know in most Western countries, I'm just not sure about Australia or Europe if they have a Father's Day or not. Um, if you're doing, uh, if you have Father's Day this weekend, what are you guys doing for your father? Uh, I think, not I think, I know we've already made reservations for uh, Saturday. Uh, our whole family is going to go out to uh, that seafood restaurant, the same place I took my brother. Very, very nice area. So I can't wait to have some more oysters and seafood too. But uh, I'm super happy about that. But, uh, you know, when I think about how Korea does it, it's like unfair for the parents. Because you don't have a separate day for mothers and separate day for fathers. I think you should have separate ones because they're that special. Um, but Children's Day, I think, is not something you need. Because, like, almost every day is Children's Day. Like, every day it's all about your children. Your whole life is about your children. You know what I mean? So, and even when you have, like, like think about this. Even Mother's and Father's Day, it doesn't really become that meaningful until the children become a little bit older. When they're making their own money, they do things in their own volition, right? Because when you're younger, like a little kid, it's the other parent that's making the child do this for their parents kind of thing. And they're guiding you, right? How to treat your mom or your dad. And it's not, it, it, like, it's, it, you know, tell me it feels good if your child comes to you and says, like, I wub you, mom. I wub you, dad. You know, like, when you get that, you're like, oh, my God. I feel so good inside but is not as meaningful as when your children grow up and they're living on their own and they're you know they're just giving you um, their thanks for what you've done in their life and like I think that's uh, a completely different meaning when that happens like you know like even at my age with me and my brother right now too but yeah like but isn't it guys shocking it's it's June 16th which means we are past the midway point of June we're already past the halfway point of June, guys. I can't believe how fast this month is. Like, you know, from now, it's just going to get faster and faster to the end of the year. It's kind of like when you hit Wednesday. Wednesday. Wednesday's the middle of the week. But once it hits Wednesday, Friday comes like, like blazing fast, right? So, you know, like, yeah, it, it's very interesting to just to how slow it was in March because of all that tribulation and chaos. But now things are just mo they're flying by. I can't wait till the end of the year comes. You know, I can't wait. Um, you know, last night I had some free time. So I was, uh, what was I doing? After dinner, uh, like there's nothing on. Like all the sports are done. The NHL playoffs have finished. Uh, the NBA finals have finished. And uh, the only thing on is baseball, which is really boring to watch and such, right? But uh, it was like 7 p.m. 
And I thought, you know what, let me just go watch a movie. So I went to the movie theaters, very, very close to my house. It was like, it, you know, I got there in 15 minutes. And uh, it was like 7.22, 7.20, 25 around there where I arrived at the theater. And Spider-Man already started at 7, so I couldn't watch. That's the one I really wanted to watch. But the only other movie that I really wanted to watch, or not really wanted to, but I was, you know, I thought, you know, there's something I would watch is Transformers. I watched it, and I gave it like a 6 out of 10. Like, it's uh, same old stuff. Not a very great story, uh, but a very interesting ending that kind of brought me back to my childhood. And I'm not going to spoil anything for you guys, but it's very, very interesting because I'm... I'm from the old, old school. Remember, I'm born in the 70s, right? So Transformers, you guys only know Transformers from these movies. I've known Transformers when they were like like the budget, budget cartoon back in the 80s. Like we're talking early 80s. It was already out and it was awesome. I had all their toys. And even when the first Transformers cartoon movie came out, you know when that came out? It came out like 1986, that was the first Transformers movie. It was a cartoon. It was crazy. Like, all the kids were excited. It was the first time I went to the movie theaters by myself. Like, my me, my parents, well, it wasn't by myself because my parents dropped me and my brother off with our friends. And we went to go watch Transformers. It was such an amazing time eating popcorn and candy and just having a great time with our friends. And, um, like, that's how long Transformers have been around. I, you know, you got to know how much, like we had hundreds and hundreds of dollars of toys, which, you know, back then, like in the eighties, that's a lot of money. And we had, like, I had, like most of you guys won't even know, uh, the, the transformers. Like when I start naming them, you guys, like only the people born in the seventies and eighties will understand like the constructicons, the Dinobots. Uh, I had Metroplex, which is, uh, a transformer which is an entire city, and he transformed into this role. But I had Firefox, or Skyfox. Was it Firefox or Skyfox, right? It was a, the jet plane that could switch from Decepticon to uh, Decepticon to Autobot. You know, we, me and my brother had all of them. Soundwave, we had uh, Optimus Prime, Bumblebee. We had all these toys, so I was really, really into it. Um, but, you know, the movie... I give it a 6 out of 10 because the story was just kind of lacking. It was all about the CG and the fighting scenes. That's what it was all about. The story itself, yeah, it wasn't really good. Yeah, and and the, yeah, yeah. Like, I think 6 is generous, if I were to be very honest. Yeah, so, yeah, I watch Transformers. I wouldn't recommend it. I, I, I would tell everyone who wants to watch Transformers, wait till it comes out on like Disney or Amazon or wherever, you know, whatever platform is going to come out there. But it's definitely not worth it to go to the theaters. Like the one I'm super like, I think there's two, no, three movies I'm really, really looking forward to. And I think I'm not going to watch anything else until these come out. Number one is Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer, I can't wait for that one. That was about the atomic bomb. How it was made, I think, during World War II. Oh my gosh, like, uh, I can't wait for that one, because the, uh, the director, if you guys know who the director is, it's Christopher Nolan, do you guys know Christopher Nolan, Christopher Nolan is such an amazing, um, such an amazing director, if you look at the movies that he's done, like the latest one he did was not one of his best. It was Tenet, but it was still interesting. Then you had Inception. Tell me you guys didn't like Inception. How about Interstellar? He did Interstellar. He did a bunch of these amazing movies. He did all of um, uh, he did all of The Dark Knights with Christian Bale. Like that is crazy. He did Dunkirk. Um, Man, he, he did a ton. And a, a lot of these great movies that he did, I thought, you know, definitely the Dark Knight series, Interstellar was awesome. Uh, you got, he's he's just very good. So Christopher Nolan, I trust his movies. And then um, another one coming out in the same month, I think is going to be Mission Impossible, Dead Reckoning Part 1. I'm looking forward to that because Tom Cruise is the last standing movie star of our generation. There's no one else who's really a movie star, movie star except him. He is like a real movie star kind of thing, right? 
And uh, Dune. Dune 2 is coming out also. I think that's coming out later in December around that time. But number one was very good. A very good uh, intro into, into, the, into the movie. Those of you guys haven't seen the old Dune. Dune came out, I believe, in the 80s or 90s also. That one was pretty good too. But uh, this one... It looks really, really epic. But either way, that's something you, you got to watch on IMAX. Just like Oppenheimer, you got to watch on IMAX. These are all big, big movies that I really want to watch. So, yeah. Those, like, those are the three I'm waiting for. I think I'm not going to watch anything else because uh, I've just been too disappointed. Just really, really disappointed more than anything else. Yeah. Oh, you know what's kind of cool? Kind of interesting? I was, I was talking uh, to, to someone, and uh, they were telling me that... Uh, because they listen to this podcast like every single day, uh, they're like, they feel like they know me. <laughs> Isn't that kind of weird? Well, not weird, but do you guys get that same feeling? Like they're, I don't know if they know, it's like they're comfortable with me. Uh, they feel like I'm, I don't know what, they didn't say friends, kind of like, you know, that uh, older brother or, you know, that cool pastor or rebel pastor. <laughs> And it's really interesting because it's, you know, on, on these podcasts, it's like you hear me all the time, but I don't know anything about you. I don't know everyone who's listening to this. I just don't, right? Because I don't know everyone who's listening to it, it's a little bit different because I'm just like, oh, all these people know my voice, but I have no idea who everyone else is. And I think that's why it's a good thing that you guys you know, jump into the comments and stuff like that too. So, I, you know, when I read, I'm like, oh, that's you. Oh, okay, I know who you are kind of thing, right? Because I love reading your comments also and and, and uh, responding to those too. Uh, so, yeah, I found that kind of cool. Like people, yeah, because they're listening to me all the time and they're like, yeah, oh, yeah, I feel so close to you kind of thing. And I'm just like, oh, that's so interesting because it's so true. It's such a one-way thing. Like this, uh, this platform, because it's a podcast, it's a one-way, it's not live. Like, I don't see your comments. I don't see what you guys are writing also. So I thought that was uh, quite interesting too. Uh, you know what I wanted to do? I want to give you guys, because uh, I do love coffee, and I've studied some uh, studied some things about coffee. I wanted to give you a coffee tip for the weekend, right? And this has to do with uh, how to know you're, you're getting uh, good, good coffee beans, right? And this is just a very, very small tip, right? And this has to do with the importance of roasting, all right? So the one thing you guys need to know about roasting is, um, like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, just the tip is going to be when you go to a cafe or when you buy beans. What, what's the one question you should be asking, or what should you be looking for? And when you go to a cafe, uh, if, if I, if I don't know the cafe very well, I'm always asking when were the beans roasted, and this is how you know whether your the coffee is going to be good or not, or like good quality is uh, a good cafe they know when it was roasted and you're you got to get the beans when they're within a week of roasting like w within 10 to 12 days those beans are no good like they lose all the flavor they lose their healthy uh characteristics and stuff like that too the healthy properties yeah they lose a lot of it after about like almost two weeks and that's why you want to make sure that when you ask them the roasting day they're going to tell you that they were roasted within the week like anywhere from three to seven days, right? Then you'll know, oh, okay, so these are pretty good beans, whatever it is, right? So always, when you go to a cafe, always ask when the beans were roasted and you want to look for something that's within a week, right? And this is how you know whether you're in a good cafe or not, right? Uh, the second thing is, uh, if you're going to go buy beans, like some of you buy, you know, buy your beans and, and go home and make coffee, uh, the second tip, like the, the same thing, the tip is when you buy beans, um, when you buy the beans, there's going to be a, a date on the packaging, right? If the packaging has the roasting date, you know it's good beans. And if it has an expiry date, it's no good, right? So don't get beans that have an expiry date. Get beans that have a roasting date. Like I said, if you're going to buy those beans, I would get those beans where you, you've got those beans that have been roasted within the last three to four days because you're going to be you're going to be uh, eating them at home earlier is better. So I would say like even two to three days is better because you're going to be using it for the next week, whatever it is. Right. So uh, th that's the tips. Uh, one, one, just one quick tip. When you go to cafe, ask for the roasting date. It's got to be within a week. Right. And when it comes to buying beans, look at the packaging. And if it's a uh, roasting date, then you can buy it. And of course, within the last, you know, three to five days, buy it. 
And if it's only an expiring date, expiry date, I would not buy them because they've probably been there for weeks or months, right? It's basically stale beans, right? And for a lot of you guys might think to yourself just, you know, oh, but it's vacuum sealed or it's frozen. It doesn't prolong the freshness of the beans, right? And this is why I hate chains like Starbucks and and coffee bean. Like I trust coffee bean more than Starbucks. Like Starbucks is one of my enemies, right? I don't like Starbucks at all. Like the coffee. Like I know people like to have the other stuff, you know, uh, at Starbucks, but when it comes to coffee, Starbucks is last resort, or if someone gets me a gift card, then I have no choice, right? It's basically just commercialized, terrible, junky coffee, right? Those are for the caffeine junkies. It is not for the coffee lovers, <laughs> right? So that is the coffee tip for the weekend, all right? So here's one thing that's kind of interesting that's, uh, that I've been thinking about. Now, you know, I did that fun thing yesterday when I did the movie trailer again for the Rebel Pastor, right? And I used, you know, I'm basically using Star Wars theme because Rebel Pastor, you know, the Rebel, Rebel Forces, it's kind of like it has to do with Star Wars. So after I started doing, uh, you know, after I did that trailer, I actually started listening to some more Star Wars music because, you know, it's very epic, right? And it brings a lot, it just brings a lot of memories to mind. So I was listening to some Star Wars music. And of course, as I'm listening... Uh, I can see scenes of the movies passing through my mind. You know, it's because it, it just generates uh, scenes from the movie, right? And uh, I, then I really started thinking about the theme from Star Wars, right? So I, I really think that this inspiration came from God. Because, you know, Star Wars is about the Force, the Jedi, right? Against the dark side. And, you know, we all know that this, there's a story of Darth Vader. Uh, and he was originally on the good side. And talented new Jedi uh, that was very, like, considered, like, one of the most talented and, you know, you know, everyone saw the potential for Anakin to be, like, one of the greatest Jedi. But eventually, he turned to the dark side because he couldn't overcome himself and his emotions. But if you watch, you know, the, the first three uh, movies that came out was episode four, five, and six, uh... Interesting thing about Darth Vader's story arc was he was good, went to bad, but at the very end of his life, uh, like, you know, one of the reasons why he went to the dark side is because of emotions for his uh, his lover, his wife, uh, that died. But in the end, interestingly, that those same emotions led him back to the good side, right? And in the end, he redeemed himself by killing the emperor, right? Emperor Palpatine. So it's an interesting story how he kind of let himself go and eventually came back at the end and saved his son and the entire empire. But when you think about that story, that's those story arcs of like Darth Vader, one of the greatest of the Jedi. Wasn't the greatest. He wasn't Yoda and anything else like that. He was one of the greatest. But it made me think deeply about our situation, Right? And why do people who are like so great, have such high potential, did so many amazing things, like why would they switch sides? And a couple things came to mind is, number one is there's always a reason, right? The, 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 and the reason is going to be important to that person. Like think about Anakin Skywalker, um, you know, he's a Jedi. They're not supposed to fall in love because emotions cloud judgment, right? But he falls in love uh, with the queen, right, Amidala, the, the princess at that time, right, and, you know, she died, and that brought rage to him, which is understanding, right, so, you know, think about even all the people that we look at right now that we don't understand, some things, you know, you, if you put yourself in that situation, uh, you'd start to understand a lot better, like, for instance, imagine you're going to go to jail for something, like how many people wouldn't actually just try to save themselves because they just, how many people actually want to go to jail? How many people would be selfish in a situation where, you know, uh, you would, you'd go to jail or you'd lose your job? You know what I mean? Like, wouldn't you understand that type of desperate situation, right? How many people wouldn't steal to feed their children? And when you think about it, everyone has their reasons for what they do. And even though it doesn't make it right, we, can, we still have to have that empathy to understand like, ah, oh, that's why. I understand. It's not right, right? But I understand. Like sometimes it's about money. Sometimes it's about love. 
But these things are powerful enough reasons to make you turn against your faith, right? And the one thing that I thought was very interesting is when I thought about Luke Skywalker. So Luke Skywalker is obviously Darth Vader's son. Spoiler alert for those that you haven't watched Star Wars. <laughs> Right? So the one thing that was inspiring about Luke, he never gave up on his father who went to the dark side, who was like the enemy of uh, the rebel forces. And because the you know Luke never gave up on his father, eventually it it clicked in his mind and he was able to and at the very, very end of his life, he saw the light, even though he was in so much darkness. And think about this, if Luke had zero hope in his father and just hated his father, the father would just, it would have been so easy for his father to just kill his son. It's like, ah, this kid hates me anyways, whatever it is, right? But since Luke loved his father still, it made, it made Darth Vader think about the little light that was left inside. And it made me think about all the people that have left and turned. And, you know, we might, you know, a lot of people got hurt from them too. If we see zero hope and we show no light to them, it's easy for them to just continue to hurt us without regret. No regrets because, you know, we're doing the exact same thing to them, you know? And, you know, it, it's the thing is when you treat people really well, even when you're treated wrong, you know, there's two things that could happen. Number one is they'll feel guilty and they'll start to see the light like, oh, man, I shouldn't do this anymore. Or uh, the second one is they'll get more angry because, you know, when they attack you, uh, what happens is they do something bad to you and then all of a sudden they're in debt because they did something wrong to you and they want you to do something bad back to them so they become even again, right? So then it just makes them more frustrated, like I'm doing all these bad things, but this person is just treating me so well. Oh my gosh. It's like, um, it's, it's the life. That Sun Seam lives. It's like no matter what people say, he's going to live the life. He's going to love people as much as he can, right? It reminds me of Proverbs, uh, a proverb in uh, Proverbs 25, uh, verse 21, 22. says, if your enemy is hungry, give him food to eat. If he is thirsty, give him water to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head and the Lord will reward you, right? So people are, you know, the enemy is expecting for you to hurt them, right? And this, this uh, makes it, uh, reasonable for them to hurt you back. But if they keep hurting you and all you do is feed them and give them food and give them drink, it heaps burning coals on them because they're constantly more and more in debt to you, right? But if we, you know, it means that we need to fight the darkness with love. There's always going to be that bit of hope. And I think God has that too. God has that, that little bit of hope in every person, no matter where they've gone or no matter how much they've turned to, you know, the quote unquote dark side. And, you know, if we want to do things a godly way, then we have to do it in such a way that people on the other side can never say bad things against us. Like, well, and then they did this to me and then they, they, they did this to me kind of thing. Right? Because it would justify what they did even more. But we need to do things in a way that's God's way, the heavenly way. And when I look at this week's message too, you know, in the end, so it seems like, hey, both sides are wrong. Both sides have done wrong. And both sides need to repent. And it kind of makes me think about, uh, from God's perspective, what he sees when he looks down that even his own people are committing sins and doing wrong and treating them without love. And, you know, God's, God's got to be kind of embarrassed when he's saying, oh, these are my people. Where it would be, God would be so proud as like, even if they, even though these people did the most heinous things to them, they treated them with love. But in the end, we did wrong too, Right? In the end, who can say, oh, but we are righteous when we did those bad things to them, right? So, you know, I, I think it's something that we really need to think about. And, you know, I want God to be proud of us that he said, oh, I raised these people with love and they are treating people with love no matter what. Because it would be a different story where God's like going, yeah, I can't judge according to what they've done. Why? 
Because even my people have sin and they have to repent too. I can't judge it. Because we're all in that situation and we're all sinful in that, you know, when it comes to this matter. So, you know, when I think about this, like, how many times has God told us through the message, love your enemies? Love your enemies. Don't hate, but love. And the interesting difference is, it's usually told to us when times are okay or very good. And it's easy at that time to say, love your enemies, and we'll shout, amen, oh, amen, oh, yeah, we love our enemies, oh, love our enemies. But when it actually becomes like a time of tribulation and we really have enemies, how many of us are shouting amen, but instead we're saying terrible things about them? Oh, I hate them. I can't believe, oh, I can't stand this. How many of us are actually loving our enemies in this time right now? It just kind of shows uh, how off we are from what God has taught us. How much we don't put the words into action. In the moment of betrayal, can you forgive? Can you say, uh, can you say in front of God that, oh, no, no, I never had any bad, I didn't say anything bad about them, I had no bad thoughts about them either. How clean is your conscience? And I think this is why we have this 70 days of repentance. Right? I think it's really important because if God judges right away, we're all going to be judged. If you think about it, right, we're all going to be judged because we all sinned. We didn't do it properly. So, you know, we have one day left of this seven-day prayer condition. Let's end it really well with a good and great uh, uh, ending with our, our final prayer for the 70 days. And, you know, like we heard on the Wednesday pre dawn it's like, uh, you know, just because the 70 days is over doesn't mean we stop repenting, right? So uh, I am, it, it's crazy though. Like even for me, I'm like just listening to Star Wars music while I'm doing my work. And all of a sudden, all this inspiration comes from listening to Star Wars and thinking about Star Wars movies, right? So I, I hope it's something that, uh, you know, all of us too, you know, God is going to speak to us in many different ways. And we have to realize and understand that, yeah, God really, really is speaking to us. And sometimes um, if you're not spiritually in tune, he'll speak to us in mu uh, multiple different ways, other ways, like through music, like through uh, nature, through our experiences. And I hope that we'll be those that listen to what the Holy Spirit is inspiring our hearts about too. All right. Yeah, so uh, you know, so like I'm, I'm super thankful that I did that movie trailer, even though it was just a funny thing. I'm just glad I did that movie trailer because it makes me, uh, you know, not only is it bringing fun to the podcast, right? Because you know sometimes it gets too serious, right? But you know it brings fun to the podcast, but um, it also brings realizations like, oh, I never thought about this. Like we are in Star Wars right now. It's almost like I need to make another trailer uh, coming up pretty soon for next week. Yeah, I'll think of a new one for next week too. Either way. So uh, there it is, guys. Um, that's, uh, yeah, that's kind of the ending of the first segment. Hope you guys really enjoyed this. So let's move into our first uh, break for the day.
right, so let's get into today's word study for today. And of course, every single Friday, we have the Wednesday message word study. So I hope you guys really enjoyed uh, your head leaders delivering such a powerful and great message. And I hope it's something that all of you uh, can really gain something from. So uh, let's take a look at what's going on right now. Oh, no, not what's going on. Let's go into the messages that I listen to and the inspirations and um, uh, the realizations that I had from it too. And I'm sure all of us are a little bit different, even though the, the base of the message is still the same. We're going to have little bits and pieces that are different, right? So this week's message is look for only the good things in God, the Holy Spirit, Jesus, and the man in mission, and look for and find only the good things in people too. From Matthew 7, verse 7 and 8, very, very famous verse about ask, seek, and knock. All right? So, uh, the first point that I really enjoyed was uh, the point about seeing the value in people uh, and also seeing the value of yourself. And I think one of the hardest things that we struggle with is actually seeing the value of ourself. And you know, I, I think this is a very true statement that we can be our own worst critics. That we criticize ourselves so much to the point that you know, we have no confidence or we just don't want to stand in front of people. Like even, you know, think of, like if, if I look at myself right now, one of the things, oh, like right now, I think it's because I had some popcorn last night from the movie. But whenever I eat popcorn, uh, I just end up getting like this, uh, like I have a pimple on my nose, like straight up. It's like you look in the mirror and that's what you see. Right. And you're like, oh, I don't want to go out. I don't want people to look at my pimple. But, you know, here's the interesting thing. Whenever someone has a pimple, um, we've seen it before. So if someone has a pimple, yes, in the beginning for like the first, you know, first like five minutes, you're gonna be like, oh, dude, you got a pimple. It's like, yeah, I know. Oh, my gosh. But give it like five minutes. And from that point on, people are used to it and kind of life goes on beyond that pimple. It's so weird how we will look at that thing as the only thing in our hearts and our minds and everyone's going to see it. You don't want to go see people, whatever it is. But reality is people will notice it in the beginning, but after that, it's done. It's not as big as we think it is, but because we made it so huge, we think to ourselves like, oh, people are going to think I'm ugly or whatever it is. And this is one of the things that, it, you know, when you think about the value of self also, a lot of people, especially in this history, will probably think that uh, we're not very high. We're, we think lowly of ourselves. And one of the biggest issues that we're going to deal with, when you don't value yourself well, you're not going to take care of yourself, right? You won't exercise. You won't eat well. You're not going to have hope in yourself. Uh, you're going to think you're worthless. You're, you're not going to be as spiritual as you think you are. Right? You're not going to pray harder because you think you're not that great anyways. Why would God think about me? And when we listen to this week's message, God is saying, your value is extremely high. It's extremely high. Right? And there's tons of reasons, whether it's you heard the word, you believe in this history, you follow the man of mission, that the Holy Trinity and Jesus are working upon. There's all these different things that why your value is high. But here's the thing. Where does value come from? And of course, there is self-value, like how you look at yourself, but also there's value that comes from the people around you. Like this is why we value certain things in the world. Like for instance, um, like what is really popular right now is let's just say, oh, um, those of you guys don't know in the sporting world, Lionel Messi is like the most popular and greatest sport like soccer player in the world ever, probably ever. There's no one greater than him. He's so good. He's going to the U.S. to play for Inter Miami. And guess what? Guess what? All the tickets, like the next two years, the tickets are all sold out. And now the, the secondary market of tickets to watch Inter Miami is like $500, the average. That's the value of that one person when it comes to soccer. Why is he valuable? He's valuable because everybody wants to see him. He's made himself so much that every person wants to see him and his value becomes higher, right? Now, I'm not saying you should base it only on what other people think, but it's always about what the people, who the people you love think. That's what's more important, right? This is why one of the biggest problems in society today is social media because now we're caring about how strangers think about us when reality is it doesn't really matter. They're strangers, right? 
So what God is telling you is like, think about this. Who is the most important person in your life? Who is the one uh, that knows you deep inside? Who is the one that's created you? Who is the one that loves you more than anyone else? It's God. It's the Holy Trinity. It's Jesus. It's the man of mission, right? And they're saying to you is, do you know how valuable you are to us? That your value is that high. And sometimes we have to look at it from that perspective of the people that we look up to the most. And if they say to us, you're that valuable, who cares what strangers think? It makes no difference. But we do have to realize there is a value in what other people think about us. But not just anyone. It's the people uh, whose opinions you value the most. And this is why there's a lot of people that come from really broken homes. The reason why they don't have any self-worth is because they base it on what their, you know, their parents say, oh, you're nothing and you, you're, you have, you know, you're not valuable to me. And because they don't have God, that's their everything. And then they look at their self-worth as nothing. But because we have God and we know how much God loves us, we know that God is the mo- that, that loves us more than anyone else. He is the highest position. What's What, what does that mean? It means that, wow, this is how extremely valuable you are right when we compare it to other human beings it's a very low level uh low level thinking right and but this is what happens to us we start comparing ourselves to people that are not that important to us really in the long run so what if they have more money so what if they have more materials but that's how you know that's kind of the low level thoughts of human beings Oh, why are they blessed and we're not blessed? Oh, why do they they get these missions and titles and why don't I get those missions and titles? Right? Oh, you know, that we, we start to compare ourselves. It's hard to understand. You know, with the human mind, if you base things on the human mind, it's very unfair. And what happens with the human mind is you get to go through this rabbit hole, which is very unhealthy and endless. And that's why we have to empty ourselves and be very, be content of who we are. We're called to be in this history as standards and ancestors of faith, which means we're already that valuable. There are a lot of things we'd like, but we don't get it. And the answer is, sometimes we got to humble ourselves. You know, kind of like when I was talking about like um, the pride of men. The pride of men is so high at times that you need a complete absolute failure for you to actually see what you're doing wrong. To get your mind out of it. You're called to be in this history as standards and ancestors of faith. Right? We're that high already. And what matters is not so much what all these people, even inside your church, they're receiving blessings or titles or whatever it is, and you're not. It's more of we have to look first to God. What is, what is God thinking about us? Right? And God's telling us through today's message. Remember, who knows the value of you? Who knows the value of you more than anyone else? It's, it's God. And sometimes people will make mistakes. They may not have value as you should. But it's because they're not God. They don't know how valuable you really are. And this is why the more we turn to God, the more... God, you know, the more that we will recognize and acknowledge our uniqueness, right? How unique we are compared to others, right? It's not about comparing myself to other people's uniqueness. It's about figuring out what is my, what makes me unique? What is that special thing that I have? And you have to thrive in that area. That's the place you're looking for. Sometimes you're looking for titles or missions that are not really fitting of you anyways, Sometimes it's better to go into something else beside, you know, instead of like, oh, why don't I get this? Oh, why do they get this? Why don't I get blessed kind of thing, right? Sometimes it's about you figuring out yourself. What is your, like, even for me, even right now at this point in my life, I I don't, there's like missions I know I don't want to do. Like, I don't want to be a head leader. I'm sorry, I don't want to be a head leader. I don't want to be assistant. No, I don't want to be that either. And I look at myself like, oh, but there's some things that I really want to do. I recognize what is unique about me and some things I'm just not good at. So I think that we have to uh, understand very, very carefully, you know, the value of self first. Uh, The second thing I thought was very, very interesting from the message was 
about evangelism, right? So a point was taken from the Sunday message is if you want evangelism to start getting great and taking off, how does that happen? It's about testifying about the positive and good things for each other. Think about that. If you want evangelism to take off, it happens through testifying about the good things about each other. What does that mean? It means that you're building a positive culture inside your church. And this positive culture is something that is invisible, but people are absolutely attracted to. It's that heavenly culture, right? That people say, wow, look at this group of people. They're so different. The culture begins with all of us, right? First creating that, what is so great about each and every one of us? Now, one of the big things that you don't want to do is just because, you know, the message is saying, look at the good things. It doesn't mean ignore the shortcomings, ignore the things that we lack in. It just means that we have to be able, we can change ourselves through our strengths. So make yourself, make yourself an expert in that one area. And once you become um, someone competent in something, with that confidence and the realizations and learning how to change yourself and make yourself do the things that we're strong in, you'll be able to change your shortcomings too. We got to be those that are looking at the good things, right? So when you, like, think about this. Very rarely, which I, you know, but I think this is terrible. It's like, but very rarely is there going to be like open criticism of each other. And if leaders are doing that or people are doing that, I think that's a terrible like habit to openly criticize in front of tons of people. And that usually doesn't happen. However, uh, when does criticism and when does like all these negative words come out? It's usually when like you talking to your best friend or you're talking to these small groups but I don't think people really realize how damaging it is even when you're open, like not openly, but you're criticizing someone behind their backs in the small groups. And all this stuff contributes towards a negative culture inside your church. It does. It all reflects, it all comes out. Because you know how people are. When someone says something bad, we all think that, you know, like, oh my gosh, I can't believe they did that. And you start treating this person differently. It contributes towards a negative culture. And this is why we have to see the good in others. There is a proper way to go about everything. There is a proper way. There's a proper way to resolve things too. Which means that, yeah, always openly testify how all these good points that people have. But what about the bad points? It's like not openly. Those are things that you can resolve individually, one-on-one, -on -one, talk to them. Right? Helping people in a wise way, communicating with them in a constructive way, right? Not just pointing out negative traits. We've got to do things in a better way. Right? In the end, when you think about it, is anyone really trying to do things with malicious intent? And the answer is no way. People aren't trying to do things with malicious intent. We know people aren't trying to like purposely hurt each other or purposely do bad things. And if we keep that in mind, then uh, we'll be able to see the good in people better. Because if you keep thinking to yourself, oh, they're always like this. Oh, they're doing this because they hate me. Then you're going to have a very hard time seeing good things in others, right? And, you know, we have to be very understanding, especially let's, let's pretend someone just became the new head leader. Someone just became a new department leader. We got to be very understanding that they're new, right? What we're trying to do right now is we need to build leaders instead of tearing them down. Because we don't have as we don't have that many leaders anyways. We don't. We don't even have that many, we don't have as many leaders as we should anyways. And we have to realize, yeah, we need to build more leaders up. Because the more we tear them down, the more these younger people are gonna see the culture and they're not gonna become leaders because they know that everyone else is talking about them too. Right? We need to contribute to a heavenly culture. We need to make the atmosphere, make the people, the culture so attractive. It's that beacon of light on a hill that everyone looks towards. So I, I really hope that if we understand this, building this great culture, this positive culture is something that we really need to, to work on to make uh, our church's evangelism get that much better.
right? I think uh, one of the, probably one of the last points that I, I really liked also is about um, how to overcome tribulations. And, you know, of course, we it's about looking for the good points of, of the Holy Trinity in Jesus. There's one, right? And that's probably one of the biggest points to overcome tribulations. I'm just mainly talking about faith, right? Because when you hit the tribulations, uh, you, you don't look for people lower than you and you don't look for people that can't help. And usually in, in most situations of, of difficulty, we're looking to people who can help us the most, which is the Holy Trinity in Jesus, right? And the more we see the good points, the more we feel, the more we're like, oh, I can trust God. Oh, uh, I'm going to have stronger faith. Oh, I can love them more. Oh, I receive more power and strength. I can overcome tribulations with that hope. The more we recognize those positive things, the more we're blessed and the more we're helped, the more we're united, right? And that's why one of the big things, how to overcome tribulations is not looking for the good points in people. Good points in people, one of the big points is to build the culture of evangelism. But looking at the good points of God, the Holy Trinity, the Holy Spirit, and Jesus, it's more for strengthening our faith. Ah, oh, this is what God has done for me. Oh, I can't forget what God did for me here. Then I love them more. I have stronger faith, stronger foundation, more power, overcome tribulation. And this is when I become more blessed. And that was one of those big points. And that's why we have to be those, right? To uh, not just listen to the words, but if we want to be those people that are closer to God, we need to put the words of God into action. There's so many things, like think about this week, there's so many things to put in action from the message. And one of the important points I think Sun has brought up many times in the past is, is not so much about completing every single thing that's said in the message. It is about the attempt, the heart, wanting to do it. Because we're not going to be great at putting the words into practice all the time. We're going to be trying new things we've never tried before. It's about actually trying it, Right? Putting the attempt in, putting the effort in, that in itself is putting the words into action. Putting the words into action isn't being successful at it because we're not going to be you know, successful the first three, four, five, ten times. It might take a while before we're successful at it. It's about actually trying to put the words of God into action. And when you try to put the words of God into action, because it's God's words, God will help you to succeed and God will protect you during those times. Right? We've gotten the word, which is the greatest gift from God. It is the greatest gift, right? And it saves us from death. It saves us to dif uh, our difficulties and our problems. It helps us to overcome. So we have to be those that, regardless of what we feel, because feelings go up and down. You know, even that first love. So a lot of people don't have the first love that they that they had when they first came to this history. And you can't enjoy the word anymore because you've lost that love and passion for it. But you got to do it, right? Sometimes it's the action more than the feelings. And that's, that's what real love is. I'm not going to feel love for my parents all the time, 24-7. Sometimes I'm mad at them. But I'll still love them, meaning I'll still treat them well. I'll still buy them things. I'll still do the things that I need to do. That's love. Love is not only when you feel. Greater love is when you do even when you don't feel. Right? We have to find that love again through our actions. Because I know that if, how do I know if someone really loves me? They love me not only in the good times, but also in the bad times. Right? That's the thing. So I hope that all of us too can take take these messages, like the, take these messages from the Sunday message and really like put it deeply in our hearts. We have to make ourselves into righteous people. Take the words, make ourselves, right? Make ourselves righteous, make ourselves holy. And one of the big things from the message is if you make yourself righteous and holy, then when you look at another righteous person, you'll, you'll know that they're righteous. But if you have a wicked heart, then even when you look at a righteous person, you look at them as wicked, right? You project what you think. Oh, they're just doing this because they want to, they just care about how they look. But that's actually what you think and why you're doing it, right? Remember, we are all co-creators of the life we live because of free will. It's not just God's responsibility. It's both of ours. You know, we fall short. 
we fall into temptation. Why? Because sometimes we kind of lose that value of the word, lose the value of prayer. And then what eventually happens is we start to see things with the wrong perspective. And that damages our life of faith. Right? We need to be those. Right? Uh, we need to be those that kind of reshape ourselves once again after we went through the intense fire of tribulation. It's kind of like Play-Doh or clay. It melts us and it becomes soft once again. And we need to reshape ourselves and put us through the oven once again, the oven in the fire of the word. God and Jesus, the Holy Trinity and Jesus, they have all the answers. So take the time to pray. That is our responsibility. Remember, Matthew 7, 7, and 8, we are asking, we are seeking, and we are knocking. That is our responsibility that God does not do. God's responsibility is to give. God's respons responsibility is to help us to find. And God's responsibility is to open the door. Right? So we need to keep asking, keep figuring it out, get the answers, and then we'll keep solving those problems in our heart. Right. So uh, last thing, uh, last thing is this. Um, uh, what I said during uh, the first segment is, remember, where is the fault? The fault is on both sides. It's on both sides. We all acted out of ignorance. And this is why we need a time of repentance. And after the time, of, you know, like personally, my feeling is after the time of repentance, judgment comes. Because God doesn't want to judge the people, his own people. He gives them time to repent and then the judgment will come. Like, that's my feeling, right? So this is why we're told it's time to repent. Because if once the judgment comes, it takes everyone, right? Including those who uh, are righteous, but they didn't repent. So let's repent the best we can for ourselves, for our family, our nation, and the world, Right? So I, I hope it's something that we uh, take this, this week's Sunday message into consideration. Uh, for the rest of this week, what else can we put into action? All right. So there it is, guys. That is the end of today's uh, word study. Hope you guys really enjoyed that. So let's get into the second break for today. Don't fall. 
blessings you received in my domain of grace and love. Don't forget. Cherish it, value it before it's too late. And everything you received gets taken away. you made my love. Don't forget the value of this time, the blessings you received in my domain of grace and love. Don't forget. Because one thousand years out there it's nothing like just one day with me. All right. So uh, it is the last segment for today. And of course, a lot of us are looking forward to this. We missed it last week. But uh, once again, uh, Daniel Baker comes up with another episode. Hope you guys really enjoy this. Everyone, please welcome all the way over there from Korea. This is Daniel Baker with Until the End. Hello everyone, welcome back to the Do It Until The End podcast. Now, how was everyone's week this past week? Because it's the end of the week, you know, Friday, we're chilling, we're having a nice time. You know, we're getting ready to have the rest of the week, spending it with the Lord, uh, spending it with family, and ex we're going to have a good time. So, how was the past week? I want to talk with you guys in the comment section below. And, um, yeah, I have some pretty good news. Um, I'm going to Thailand um, for uh, a long-awaited vacation uh, because, you know, I've been doing this mission for like six, seven months now. And a lot of fun, a lot of, I, I would say, stress, necessary stress. However, I haven't had much time to take a rest and to just shut my brain off in that aspect and have some good f times with family and those kinds of stuff. So uh, the reason why I'm going right now, which is a very interesting time, is because it's right before, like it's a month before the the Korean holidays, the Korean um, summer break. So during the summer break, that's when the SS leaders, the SS teachers are most, uh, they're most, they're very busy because of a lot of, programs that they have to orchestrate and make and create so right before that i'm going to go take my vacation and i'm going to go to thailand uh three days i think is in bangkok we're going there for a couple days i think two or three days staying at a hotel a really nice hotel then the last three days are going to be spent in a beach resort which is going to be a, a lot of fun and i'll I, I really don't think I don't know what I'm going to do for next week's episode. I'm probably going to record something bef beforehand and I will let you guys know how the trip goes. So um, I want to be tr perfectly honest with you guys. Last week, I did not upload because of an incident that happened a lot in the past, but didn't. I thought I was doing really well and you know, recently, very recently, um, last week especially, I forgot a lot. So not only the podcast segment, you know, I forgot to record that, but I had a couple instances in my life where I forgot to do something that's important, but it's, I, I just forgot, you know, and I was like, why, 
because because you know I was pretty shocked. You know, the next day, I got a text from Pastor Sky like, you know, a weird situation I'm in. You know, and I I felt really bad, and I felt really bad because you know I usually don't forget like this. I forgot, and I I I, I don't, I'm not going to make any excuses on why I forgot, but I really wanted to try to find why I'm forgetful and. There are phases, right? So a good couple, good two, three months where I was constantly product, uh, giving out, pu- putting out the, co- you know, the content of, you know, the until the end podcast. A couple, a few really good months, and then I just forgot one week. And why did I forget? And yeah, that's what happened. And it really made me think about why people forget, you know. So for me, forgetting or being forgetful happens in very specific situations.、Um, so this could be different for many people or everyone. So I really want you to think: When am I most forgetful? So for me, I am really forgetful when my surroundings are very messy. When I my house isn't clean, my、um, my Surroundings are very messy, so when I'm in that kind of environment, it, it's very hard for me to think.、Uh, it's very hard for me to have a clear mind to actually think about the future, right? Think about the schedule I made for myself. Now I realize that you know, as I'm recording, that if my surroundings are messy, it could it could infer that right now. I have a lot of mental fog. My, I'm thinking a lot about many subjects, or it could be,、uh, it could show, it's, it, it could be a showing of my mental state currently at that time. Which means when I'm very messy, or when I'm during those times where my surroundings are very messy, that means that I should be really careful about the things that I need to do and make sure that I don't forget. To do a certain activity that I have on my schedule. So, yeah, that that was the first one. My surroundings when they're messy, just make sure and just be careful to not forget and make sure you clean up after yourself. So the second reason why I forget is because I'm hyper stimulated. When I am hyper stimulated, either through YouTube or movies.、Um, I'm constantly not in the moment, and when you're not in the moment, you're very. When you're not, it's 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 hard to explain, but when you're not in the moment, you're very focused on the present and past, right? It's very hard to think about the future when you're hyper stimulated. You're all you're when you're watching your YouTube shorts, your Instagram reels. You're constantly scrolling. You're always thinking of, and trying to process the. Th- Information that you just watched, and you're hyper stimulated. Your brain is constantly, constantly trying to process the things you watched, and it doesn't have time to process the things for the future. Now, the types of thoughts you need for the future is very important for your schedules and not forgetting, right? So, to make sure you're in tiptoe mental health. And you're make sure to make sure that you're on top of everything, your social life, your spiritual life. It's really important to not be hyper stimulated,、um, to really cut off the YouTube, the Instagram, the things that really distract you from being present and having a future outlook. Now, that's one thing that I I need for myself to really improve on still. Right now, so the third thing is if you're super busy and you really don't have time to think, you are more prone to forget. So what does this mean?、Uh, last week,、uh, during Saturday and Sunday, I was super focused on preparing for the Sunday service praise, and the Sunday service praise was a lot of fun preparing for it. You know, I really enjoy praising and giving glory to God. And I realized during that time that I really wanted to do the choir 
well, I was listening to the choir, you know, practice, and I was like, man, I really want to do the choir too. So the next day, I woke up like 6 a.m. and I got to Wormandong uh, at 7 just to do the choir practice, and I did the choir, also did the choir, which meant that, you know, I was focusing a lot, and I was so busy that I was really prone to forgetting about even something about, you know, about my mission, about uh, some, you know, I have to, right before the service ends, I have to tell, you know, the other SS teachers what to do and the different types of meetings they have to have with the SS. And I almost forgot that. I was like, we're so busy that because I was uh, constantly doing the choir and preparing for the praise that I almost forget. So, you know, those situations, the situations where your surroundings are messy, you're hyperstimulated, the, the situations where uh, you're so busy, where it's hard for you to think, you're really prone to forgetting. So there's a couple of things you can do in, this, in these three situations. So you could, you know, try to get out of these situations and try to focus on, you know, trying not to forget uh, you could do this by uh, creating a really detailed schedule and constantly going back to that schedule and that's one way to do it another way to do it is just constantly mentally reminding yourself that you have this uh, schedule today and if you have this schedule today I'm going to act on this schedule now this is something very important where you need to mentally uh, remind yourself and constantly think about the thing you need to do because you can make a schedule and you could you know ha follow that schedule to a T however you will have that moment where you know you'll slip up and you realize that you know you're forgetting and during those times you really need to think about the schedule that you need to do and you really need to not forget about the schedule that's going on so that's all i have for you guys today and you know i really just don't want to forget uh about very important things because when you forget uh <laughs> you know it's like the message if you forget you die so not forgetting about the past experiences and how God helped you in the past is very important, but also not forgetting about your schedules and making sure you do uh, your responsibilities at, at the right time is very important. And that's something I'm really working on during this time. So I hope everyone enjoyed this po podcast segment. Now, when uh, my next podcast airs next week. I'm going to be uh, in Thailand, um, probably on a beach resort, um, having a lot of fun. So I'll maybe see what I can do. And to everyone who's going until the end with the Lord, let's walk this path together. Peace out, guys. Bye-bye. All right, and thank you so much, Daniel, for a wonderful and awesome segment. And yeah, it's it's very uh, the one thing I really really admire about Daniel is whenever I talk to him, like he missed last week's um, content, but the very very first thing he's thinking about is what can I do to make it better. And I think that is a very hopeful future we have because you know we're not all perfect. He did like two three months of straight like he kept bringing out all the content. Right. So it's kind of like it's not like this is normal for him, but he's still thinking about, hey, what can I do to make it better? Why did I forget this situation? What can I do so I don't forget it next time? So I think it's someone that, um, you know, if you're 19 years old, it's something where you look at and say, wow, that is a future hope we have for leadership in this history too. So I hope everyone uh, really enjoyed that. It makes you think about all the different things that we need to realize about our life and the things that we didn't, um, that the mistakes that we made too. And I hope that we can fix them all the time also. All right. So there it is, guys. That is the end of today's podcast for this week. Uh, I hope you guys have an amazing and awesome weekend. And we'll see you guys again on Monday on the Morningstar Drive on 117.8. The morning star drive 117.8 You soaring up with sky, now's the time, don't delay I'm sitting in my ride and it's time to fly So let's re -air.
aligned Just listen and fill your mind I'm burning with desire and the passion Nobody can stop me when I'm like this I got my head in the zone, you know I'm on the morning star drive, you know I'm burning with desire and the passion Nobody can stop me when I'm like this I got my head in the zone, you know I'm on the morning star drive 